Hi, this is Dr. Jim Anderson, and I'm here to talk to you about a medication called Meropex. As you know, I treat patients uh, uh, with the restless legs, and I oftentimes opt to do uh, the non-medication type route for a lot of you, because we're trying to change up how this is treated. But for many of you, this may be the appropriate way to go about treating your restless legs, especially if your symptoms aren't uh, as severe. So we're gonna talk about Meropex, that's the topic. And we've got a lot of information here that I'll try to make sure you understand. And you may not be able to read it, it is my writing. <laughs> and uh, we'll go through this bit by bit. But first of all, Meropex, another name for it is called Premopexol. Uh, it's, it's the, that's a term that you don't hear as much. Meropex is more commonly used. The mechanism of, of uh, action is not totally understood but it's thought to possibly be uh, that it's a dopamine agonist. In other words, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that uh, gives you that pleasurable feeling, which we'll talk about in a minute, but this kind of acts as that. And so it stimulates more of the dopamine kind of response in the brain. Uh, dopamine is responsible for the feeling of pleasure, for motivation, uh, for memory, and for fine motor control, like when you're writing or maybe doing a drawing. That would be an example of fine motor control. So let's talk about side effects. And there's a whole list of side effects here. Number one would be hypotension. 53% of people might experience hypotension. Constipation, about four to 14%. Uh, nausea is 11 to 28. Amnesia is four to 6%. Dizziness is two to 26%. Dream disorder is 11%. Um, dyskinesia, which means impairment of voluntary movement, which could be tremors or shaking of some sort, uh, that would be 17 to 47 percent. That's pretty high. And then extrapyramidal movements, 28 percent, which would mean things such as phantasms, tremors, restlessness. There are different medications oftentimes. This last one I mentioned, 28 percent, is a common reason sometimes people jump out of drug studies because they have these extrapyramidal movement disorders. Uh, then finally, amnesia, 4 to 26%. And finally, down here, kind of hard to read, but hallucinations, 6 to 17%. Also, heart failure, very rare, very serious, but very rare to have heart failure. So, some of this is right from a published article. This is the first paper that we created, uh, we uh, published about two years ago. We have a second one about to be published. But this is about reversing restless legs by doing surgical decompression of tunnels that become tight in the legs. But in this, we also did a retrospective, or I should say a review of uh, current treatments and the history of the discovery uh, and treatments that are offered for us as legs. And so these are right, some of these are right straight from, where it has quotations from, from, the, uh, from the article, as it says down here, Anderson at Frontiers in Neurology. So in terms of uh, knowing really what's going on with your brain, uh, there really isn't a lot of convincing and consistent evidence that dopamine, dopamine irregularities take place in patients' brains in terms of RLS, in terms of imaging. If imaging is done, they're not seeing really any consistent, conclusive results showing that, that the brains are that much different uh, because of dopamine irregularities in those that suffer from restless legs. Uh, also, another study showed that in terms of success rate, uh, there's about a 50 to 77% chance that people that take the medication are going to have, uh, are going to report better or much better uh, response, or I should say, or alleviation or reduction of the restless leg symptoms. But yet, to counter, to counter that, another study that we found, again, in our research paper, uh, mentioned that 60% of people had an adverse effect or event, meaning they had one of these things going on. So chances are pretty good, it might do something over 50%, but also over 50%, you're gonna have an adverse event. So that's why so many of you that are watching this, it's kind of a, a, a dilemma because it might be helping you some, but you're afraid to go off this stuff because you know you're not gonna be sleeping at night, it may be that bad, but then the side effects, you're just not yourself. You're not the real person uh, with these medications in some cases. So, uh, but anyway, these are the, the, the things that you should know about Meropex. I hope this was enlightening. And as always, if you enjoy this, if you have more questions, please uh, con consider uh, giving us some comments. So I always appreciate that. And also consider subscribing 
to this YouTube channel and let your friends know about this too. Thank you for watching.